You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, <laughs> I've got to tell you that uh, tonight's broadcast is going to be very interesting. I think you're going to uh, have your eyes opened just a little bit, anyway. Uh, in fact, I think you're going to uh, be riveted to your radio for a little while. As... Uh, we move on into expose land. You know what that is, don't you? That's when we uh, show you the way somebody wants you to believe they are and then uh, tell you the truth about the way it really is. And so, sit back. Relax. Get ready for some startling revelations. And uh, remember, the only place you ever get this kind of stuff, the real truth, is right here on the hour of the time. You can search your dial. You can listen to every radio station and every radio host and every television talking head show that you can find. You will never in your life hear truth as you hear it on the hour of the time. Yes, um, you are the 32nd degree Mason. That is fact. All right. We're going to have to grill you. Oh, by all means. Now, uh, it is said by many, Richard Hoagland, my guest tonight, uh, various callers who hinted at it, that the Masons are the power structure behind everything. That the Masons possibly worship the devil, Satan. And I think you have great ombudsman with that, uh, uh, at least that much of it, right? It offends me greatly. And uh, now you know the subject of tonight's broadcast. Art Bell is doing it again, intentionally deceiving the public. Here he is, pretending to know absolutely nothing about Freemasonry. And uh, he has a rigged call with a 32nd degree Freemason calling in to him. And uh, Bell is feigning ignorance. And right off the bat, he makes a statement that he knows is wrong. No one, at least no one that I know, has claimed that Freemasons worship the devil. On the contrary, I've made it a point on this broadcast to make my audience understand, or at least bring them to an understanding, whether they believe it or not, that Freemasons do not believe in a devil. They don't believe in Satan. They do believe in a Lucifer. And the Luciferian philosophy, here's what they believe, ladies and gentlemen. They believe that the story of the Garden of Eden is a metaphor. A metaphor that... Uh, explains in their teachings how man could have remained an ignorant beast, just another animal, if he had not progressed through his evolution to the point where he could think originally instead of act merely upon instinct as most animals do. They believe that man, in this metaphor, was held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust and vindictive God, held prisoner in the chains or the bonds of ignorance. Now that means, in their story, that man was just an animal. He could not think that he was set free from these chains, from his imprisonment, by Lucifer, or Prometheus, who gave man the gift of fire, or the gift of intellect, who said to Adam and Eve, first, according to the story, seduced Eve, to eat of the fruit 
of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then Eve seduced Adam to do the same. So through the gift of intellect, being able to think, knowing wrong from right, having now intelligence, common sense, if you will, man was set free from the bonds that animals find themselves enslaved within. That is ignorance. The inability to think. The inability to reason. Held prisoner in the Garden of Eden. In innocence, ignorance, subject to the laws of nature. And according to the promise of Satan, who was then the uh, agent of Lucifer, in reality, in the mysteries, they are the same, the same thing, Lucifer and Satan. Man could become as God. That's the promise made to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden by Lucifer or Satan. The two are the same in the mysteries. Same thing. Prometheus in the ancient Greek myths. It's the same story. In the myth, Prometheus brought the gift of fire to mankind. Fire in the mysteries is synonymous with intellect, the mind, reason, the ability to think. This is called the Luciferian philosophy. This is what all of the adepts of not just Freemasonry, but for sure Freemasonry, and all of the other highest adepts of whatever secret fraternal order you wish to name, I don't care who it is, I don't know, I don't care what the name is, they all believe the same thing. And they all work behind the veil to make this come true. That through the use of the gift of intellect, man will conquer nature and will himself become God. That's the Luciferian philosophy. Art Bell knows that full well. Art Bell is a very highly degreed Freemason of the Scottish Rite. He may belong to other secret orders also, but he has admitted on his own broadcast to being a Freemason. Many of you heard him. It was late in the night when a caller caught him by surprise and asked him point blank, and he said yes. And then he said, are you a fellow traveler? And the caller said yes. And then Art said, well, we're not going to talk about this anymore on this show tonight. And that was the end of it. So, what Art Bell is doing here, and this was just a few nights ago, on his Dreamland show, I believe. No, it wasn't Dreamland, I'm sorry. But it was just a few nights ago, not too long ago, that this occurred. And I want to make sure that you know about it and know that he's deceiving you, and so is the caller. And if you have uh, listened to our Mystery Babylon series where we have revealed the truth about Freemasonry and all of the other highest adepts of the secret orders, and remember, we are not talking about the lower degrees in these orders, people who are sucked in for promise of material gain and preference and jobs and contracts and everything else, and legal matters, go in to, uh, to get preferential treatment in their communities and in the legal system and in business and in government. The secret handshake will get you a long way, ladies and gentlemen. Don't even kid yourself that it won't. So, let's listen a little further to this Art Bell deception. Oh, he is a great deceiver. And uh, who is the great deceiver? Who is the greatest deceiver of all? Lucifer. Right? <laughs> 
If mankind was made by God, mankind can be nothing more than a small part of that from which he was made. And since before God made the universe, nothing existed but God. Everything that has been made in the universe must be made from what existed originally. And the only thing that existed originally was God. So the most that man can ever hope for is that somewhere within him, he has the smallest portion of that original God which created everything from his own thought. The promise of Lucifer that man could be come as God or as it has been perverted. Remember, Lucifer promised man could become as God. Man has perverted that into man will become God or man is God. None of it is true. For no part can ever be equal to or greater than the whole. Listen carefully. Offends you greatly, and it especially offends me when people who ostensibly have good reasons for discussing whatever they think you're discussing in regards to the Masons yes. are severely deluded, or they have some other agenda as far as trying to make the Masons look like this, you know, behind-the-scenes group that's manipulating things. So you deny that too? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I was in the military, then it, here's here's what the callers would say. Why has just about every single president of the U.S. been a Mason? Actually, to give you an exact figure, there's been 16 presidents, and the last one was Gerald Ford. Well, you've got to admit, with the number of presidents we have, that's a pretty high percentage. Yeah, about a third. That's a pretty high percentage. Well, also, there's a good chunk of the people that were in the Boston Tea Party that were uh, Masons as what, well. What, as okay, what, what percentage of the general population is Masonic? Well, in the world, there's... No, not the world, not the world, just the U.S. In the U.S., there's about 2 million Freemasons. 2 million out of 260 million, right? Right. Okay, those are the contemporary numbers. So, how would we, um, looking back over the years, when the population was even less, and we could assume that the percentage of Masons remained the same, have ended up with that many Masonic presidents? Well, what are the... I will say, it is to be kind of a trademark of the Masons, yeah. is it, it does seem to have attracted members who have been significant contributors to society. And there you have a portion of the truth. Remember, they're only discussing Freemasonry. At the highest levels, the members of all, all, every single one of the different secret societies and fraternal orders belong to the same club. So it's not just two million, ladies and gentlemen. Many more times that. Many, many more times that. But they get to a truth here. Number one, that fully one-third of the presidents that would admit that they were Freemasons are members of a secret society, were indeed members of the Freemasonic Order. One-third of all of the presidents of the United States now, I can tell you from my research that almost all of them, almost every single one of them, were members of Freemasonry or another secret order, and all were highly degreed. Some were members of the ancient order of the Rosai Crusai. Some were members of the ancient and military order of the Knights of Malta. Some were members, highly degreed members, of the Knights Templar. And I could go on and on. But I have found no president, not one, that was not a member, a highly degreed member, of at least one of these secret orders. And all of them, all of them, all of the high degrees of all of the secret societies and fraternal orders are members of one club with one goal, with one aim, with one plan. That's one world government, the elimination of all sovereign nation states, the elimination of all existing religions save theirs, shackling the mob, which means controlling the common man or the profane as they call them, 
and the formation of a one world government, their one world government. And you heard this 32nd degree Freemason say, he admitted <laughs> that the people who make things happen in this country are Freemasons and are the highly degreed members of the other fraternal orders also. Now, understand, ladies and gentlemen, that they do not believe in the God of the Christian Bible or the Jewish Torah or of the Muslim Quran. They believe in a pantheistic order, a pantheistic order of the universe where everything is connected and everything is God. And since man is the only creature that can think and reason, the collective mind of man is the mind of God. Ergo, man is is God. That's what they believe. That is the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in a devil. They do not believe in Satan. And they believe that Lucifer Lucifer are the metaphor for Lucifer which is the development of the mind of man, is the real hero in all of this. That if there was a Jesus, Jesus had his chance and blew it. Now it's Lucifer's turn. And you will hear in the depths of the mysteries that Lucifer and Jesus were brothers. Now, don't take any of it literally. Remember, it's all metaphor to them. It makes no difference what you believe when you're looking at what they believe. You must understand they do not believe as you do. Or as I do. Or as most people do. When their goal has been reached, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who want to persecute the Jews... They will exterminate Orthodox Judaism just as quickly as they will exterminate fundamental Christianity or the Muslim religion. Now, you don't have to believe me. Get in the books and research what they have written. You will find that what I say is true. And I have pretty well documented that fact over the last seven years, I believe. So let's listen to some more of this little deception, this little little play put on by Art Bell and his caller. Uh, by virtue of the fact that we have high standards as far as character and conduct, uh, we do tend to attract some pretty lesser figures at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, uh, have you ever wondered, you're a 32nd degree Mason. Yes. Now, uh, there are a lot of people who would say, you wouldn't understand the full picture until you became a 33 degree huh. Mason. Well, Ron, I can tell you this. Less than 1% of all Masons ever get up to 33 degrees. Oh, I understand. Is there very that, 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 that would only enhance their belief in what I just said. Well, the guy that called in talking about how the, the Scottish Rite Masons have got the Luciferian doctrine and so forth, yeah. uh, that was a forgery, and it's been known to have been a forgery for some time. Ladies and gentlemen, he just told a bold-faced lie. It is not a forgery whatsoever. It was spelled out clearly by Albert Pike, one of the greatest Freemasons of all time, a 33rd degree, a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, who said that Freemasonry is a religion and further named that religion as the Luciferian philosophy. He also said that the lower degrees are never told the truth. 
But with each initiation, they are told the same story, but given a different meaning. And that they do not discover the truth until they reach the 30th degree, not the 33rd degree, but the 30th degree. According to Albert Pike in his book, Morals and Dogma, which you will find on almost every table in the House of the Temple, which is the headquarters of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry in this country, you will find a whole library devoted to the works of Albert Pike, and it is named the Albert Pike Room. For many, many years in the United States of America, every time a new Freemason was administered his oath as an entered apprentice, he was handed a copy of Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma. So what you just heard this man who claims to be a 32nd degree Freemason say is a bold-faced lie. It's just a flat-out lie. Not only did Albert Pike say it, but I have read to you in their own words from their own writings, publications, and newsletters and newspapers over the years, many, many different prominent Freemasons who said exactly the same thing. It is the truth. They believe in the Luciferian philosophy without question. However, in the degrees, as you go up the ladder of degrees, every time you must take an oath. And remember, there are side shoots from these degrees where you take many other oaths. And each time a Freemason takes an oath, he swears upon penalty of death that he will not ever divulge the secrets of the Lodge of the Order of the Fraternity of Freemasonry. It even, in the degrees, in the oaths, gives them the dictate that rather than reveal the secrets of the Lodge, they must lie. And it's okay to lie. And it's not a sin and there's nothing wrong with it. So if you ever believe that one of these people, after he's taken all of these oaths, which if he violates means he must submit to a punishment of pain of death, if you ever believe they're going to tell you the truth about the real religion and secrets and purpose of Freemasonry, you're not playing with a full deck of cards. And if you believe their other contention, which they will tell you that, oh, these are only rituals and these oaths don't mean anything, then not only are you not playing with a full deck of cards, but you came to the card game with an empty six-pack. Because that's another lie. The assertion that grown adult men take an oath swearing upon pain of death that they will or will not do something and that it means nothing is one of the greatest deceptions of all. Because if that means nothing, then his oath in a court of law means nothing. His oath upon a Bible means nothing. His word means nothing. It means he has no honor. For grown men do not take such oaths if they do not mean them. Let's listen a little more. Uh, and it's not a, that is not a period of morals and dogma which I have myself. Uh, what that was, as I said, it was a forgery aimed at trying to discredit the Scottish Rite and Albert Pike. And that's another lie. It does appear in Morals and Dogma, and many of you out there listening to this broadcast have read that book, have discovered that statement. You have it in your possession. You have the book. You have read it. What they count on, what they believe, is that the public has never read their writings, does not possess a copy of Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma, and even if they read it, do not have the ability or the intelligence to understand what it is that they read. But thanks to this broadcast over the years, the audience of the hour of the time does, has, and knows. What the guy said in that forgery was that uh, supposedly Albert Pike had sent a letter saying, you know, to you, the brethren of the highest degrees, the 30th, 31st, 32nd, 
uh, whom the Luciferian doctrine is, uh, you know, made known to, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that was a lot of, like I said, it was a lot of uh, basically BS aimed at discrediting the Masons. Um, notice how Art Bell feigns ignorance. I will say this again. Art Bell is a highly degreed Freemason of the Scottish Rite, at least 32nd degree. He has admitted to being a member during his own broadcast. And uh, many of you heard that broadcast, heard early in the morning. I know that many of you heard it, because I was not listening to that broadcast. A couple of you called me and told me about it. And then all of a sudden I received a whole series of letters from listeners who heard the same broadcast telling me in their letters what they heard. So, oh, and uh, we went to order the tape of that broadcast, and it was not available for quite some time. When it was available, there was a conspicuous editing of the tape where that entire portion of the broadcast had been edited out, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you did not record the broadcast yourself, you will not find it on the tape. Eh? But you know darn well, a lot of people sitting out there right now saying, yeah, right. Well, let me give you a little story here. When I was still in the service on active duty, one of my friends who was also somewhat inclined toward uh, some of these conspiracy theories involving the Masons, yeah. he came up to me one day and he said, you know, you just stay where you're at, you're going to get job hookups, you're going to get you know, promotions, and people are going to do favors for you, you're going to get rich. Well, now, you're not, you're not denying, are you, that there's a, a definite uh, um, inside um, old boy club within Masonic tradition? I'm not going to deny this happened in the past. It's not encouraged. Uh, one of the things that I was told when I joined the fraternity over six years ago was that anyone who describes himself or describes himself to be a mason and then hands you a business card or tells you he's in some sort of field, yeah. this is for the wrong reason. And I firmly believe in that principle. Yeah, but it still opens doors, though. It's not, Look, I'm a member of a fraternity. I'm a ham operator. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, that Art Bell, so that he cannot be accused of, of being a liar, just told the truth. Ham operators are not a fraternity. Ham operators are not a fraternity. When Art Bell said, I am a member of a fraternity, he was telling the truth. He is a Freemason. And then he said, I am a ham operator. And then he's going to use that as an example of how being a ham operator has gotten him certain things in life. And he used, he's using the ham operator as a metaphor for his real, true Masonic experiences under the truth that he told that he really does belong to a fraternity. All right. Okay. That's opened doors for me all my life. It's gotten me jobs. And I would say that the fraternity of amateur radio is somewhat less mysterious and... Uh, um, uh, let's see, cohesive than uh, the, the Masons. So I would believe that the Masons take care of their own. You know, I mean, you wouldn't deny that, would you? I wouldn't deny, like I said, that in the past there has been times where people have gotten promotions or maybe a little insight info. But here again, that's not the purpose. I'm sure the same can be said for a lot of people who are in business. They're going back to the old philosophy of, you know, who you know and so forth. Yeah, um, yeah. But as far as there being this big, you know, behind-the-scenes group of power brokers, it's, uh, I find it laughable. Uh, to finish what I was saying about my friend that you told me, you just... You hear that he's willing to admit that it's happened in the past, but of course it doesn't happen now. Who does he think he's kidding? It has always happened. And if you read the ceremonies and the oaths in all of the degrees of Freemasonry, they are not only, they are not only, they are not only, ladies and gentlemen, being nice when they do something for their brothers in the fraternity. They are bound by their oath 
to help their brothers, their brother Freemasons, whenever their brother needs help, which means when he needs a job, which means when he's being prosecuted for a crime, which means when he is bidding for a contract, which means when he's up for promotion. If a Freemason is in a supervisory position and three men are up for promotion, one is a Freemason and the other two are not, the Freemason will be promoted. It is not up to their discretion. It is not something that they have a choice in. They are bound by their oath to do it. And when they reach a certain degree, ladies and gentlemen, the oath says that they absolutely must, absolutely must, aid and comfort any fellow Freemason, no matter what he has done, no matter who he is, treason, actually, that's wrong, it's murder and treason not accepted. Which means even if they've created, even if they've uh, created or committed murder or treason, all other Freemasons must help them, must hide them, must give them food, must give them shelter, must help them get away, must help them find a new identity and be established in a new life. Are you listening to me? I read the oath on this broadcast couldn't have been more had to be within the last two months on this broadcast I read you the oath verbatim on this broadcast so again he lies not only is it done but it is absolutely required that he do it that all Freemasons do it it is not up to their discretion it's not an elective. And you'll get a job at the same year. Right, right, right. So what I said, you know, I've been third secondary mason for a couple of years now. This was, you know, about four or five years ago. And I said, I've been third secondary mason for a while. And no one's come up to me and offered me job hookups and promotions and, you know, these little bennies. I said, if you know about all this stuff and you're not even a member, why don't you clue me in and save me a couple of years? Uh, listen, can you hold on to a break? Hold on. All right. Good. Hey now, once again, the... in the people's temple was in reality a mass mind control experiment conducted by the CIA as a follow-up to something called MK Ultra. Thirty-second degree Mason from my competitor down there in San Diego. Here you are on the air again. Yes, sir. Uh, glad to have you back. Uh, you back. Uh, well, well spot. <laughs> um, now, um, how can you be sure? I mean, this really is a reasonable question. How can you be sure that when that, that extra giant leap is taken, that you have admitted only 1% of Masons ever make it to, that, that there is not information imparted to you that you simply don't know about now? It's entirely possible. In fact... When you are promoted to 33rd degree, yeah. the only people who partake in the part of the initiation ceremony yeah. are of the 33rd degrees. You see you I see why people believe what they believe? Well, but still, if you were going to have a real world conspiracy, why would you only let not even 1% of the people know about it? Uh, uh, that only very few know and control. It's power, right? 
Oh, here, here. If you consider there's two million Masons in North America, and that was in North America, not just in the United States. Uh, so you figure that's well less than one percent. And here's another deception, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, they're only talking about Freemasons, and so they're telling you that it's only 1% of the population. That's another lie. It is the highest degrees of all, every single one of the different secret societies and fraternal orders. And if you honestly believe that there's only a small handful of them, go to our website at harvest-trust.org. That's harvest-trust.org. Go down, go down the home page until you find secret. And then click on it. You will find a list of only just the secret societies that have websites on the Internet. And that's just the ones that we've been able to find so far. We know that there are more on the Internet, but finding their website, ferreting it out and making links to it, is extremely time-consuming and very difficult. There are more. What you're going to see there when you click on that secret link on our homepage is just the obvious secret societies that we've been able to find so far. There are many secret societies that do not have websites. There are others that have websites that are accessible only by password. And there are some websites that we know of which we have not been able to ferret out yet. Some we have and have not had the time to put the links on the website yet. But what you will find will keep you busy for a long, long time. And what you're going to read on those sites will absolutely amaze you. And uh, remember, it's a lot more than 1% of the population. <laughs> the true numbers would absolutely amaze you. In fact, it's shocking. It's scary. Let's go back to the Art Bell and his 32nd degree anonymous Freemason deception here. Little, little play for the profane, so to speak. So if you're looking at less than 1% of less than 1%, yes. you're not talking about an incredibly small number of people that would be involved in this knowledge to talk. That's right. And when you consider, I personally know several 33rd degree masons. Yes. And it's not like they're bankers or financiers or captains of industry. Uh, there are a lot of guys who just happen to have been in the fraternity long enough, contributed enough as far as service mm -hmm. or so forth, to get to that point. It has nothing to do with service as a Freemason as to whether you are invited to become a 33rd degree. And ladies and gentlemen, listen to me very carefully. The 33rd degree is a meritorious degree bestowed by invitation only. And it is not always bestowed just on Freemasons. It can be bestowed on high-ranked or highly degreed members of other fraternal orders because the 33rd degree is not, ladies and gentlemen, a regular degree of Freemasonry of the Scottish Rite. The degrees end at the 32nd degree. They can make anyone they wish a 33rd degree Freemason. I have records, records, where an individual was selected because of his performance toward the completion of the great work, which is the elimination of all nation states, the elimination of all existing religions, save theirs, the shackling of the mob, and the creation of one world government. That's their goal. That is their goal. Anyone who helps, who helps in any way, significantly, toward meeting that goal can be initiated through all of the degrees and be bestowed a 33rd degree Freemason in one day. In one day, ladies and gentlemen, it has happened many times. And not necessarily just to Freemasons. And that's why a guy that works in Radio Shack can be a 33rd degree Freemason. 
because it's not his work at Radio Shack that made him a 33rd degree Freemason. He may have published many books propagandizing the populace to believe in one world government, to believe that existing religions should be put aside. He may have worked in the public eye as a city councilman to guide his city into the new world order. They want you to think that these people have made no contributions other than being in the fraternal order for many years. That's not how you get to be a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, I mean, that's one view. <laughs> but 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 uh, well, I, I, if I were if I were captain of industry, I wouldn't be going around disguising myself as maybe a guy to work the radio shack. Well, you never know what mission a radio shack employee might have. <laughs> <laughs> you see where you can go with this. In other words, you don't really know because you're a 32nd degree. Now you see how Art Bill just very cleanly ridiculed ridiculed the concept that an employee of Radio Shack could ever contribute to society in any meaningful way. And he wasn't just talking about Radio Shack. He's talking about the average man. What he's saying is that it's absolutely ridiculous to think that the average man, somebody living in your own hometown, could be involved in something greater than the Boy Scouts, for instance. That's what he's really saying, ladies and gentlemen. He's ridiculing the idea that anyone at any level could participate in propelling us into world government, into helping to do away with existing religions, into helping to shackle the mob, into helping to destroy sovereign nation states. But if you've been paying attention, you know that Art Bell just insinuated a lie. Well, I can always, at some point, I like to think I'm at least uh, a possible candidate to make it, but I can always call you back after I make 33rd in case something changes. No, but you'd never call me back if you made 33rd. Oh, no, certainly I would. No, you wouldn't. It, it gives me a great pleasure to shoot some holes in some of these <laughs> idiot fantasies and conspiracies right here. <laughs> Now, Art Bell just told the truth. If he ever makes 33rd degree, he will never call back, and he will never tell the truth about it. In fact, he has not told the truth about anything yet. He has disguised it. He has taken an oath upon pain of death not to reveal any of the secrets of the Lodge. In fact, his oaths tell him that if faced with telling the truth, telling the secrets, or telling a lie, he must tell a lie. Art Bell knows much more about the 33rd degree than what he's letting on. Maybe Art Bell has already reached that pinnacle of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. He may have. For I can tell you, quite frankly, and with all the truthfulness in the world, that Art Bell is doing as much or more than anybody ever has to destroy the concept of sovereign nation-states, destroy all existing religions, to shackle the mob in the chains of ignorance with all of the deceptions and lies and hoaxes that he promotes on his broadcast, and to propel us into one world government. In fact, I revealed on this broadcast that that is the sole aim of his book, The Quickening, is to prepare the populace to accept the concept that one world government is not only coming, but that it's necessary. And I quoted him right out of his book to that effect. What do you think? A cape with Millennium Master on it? Would that be good? Uh, here again, well, you know, you might get some, you might get some black from the uh, M and M Mars company since they've already got M and M as kind of a. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody sees everybody. Got right trade. That's right. true. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and Mr. Millennium would be no different. Huh. It's an idea, though. 
How about just ABC? Art Bell's cake. Art Bell, by the way, has dubbed himself Millennium Master, or Mr. Millennium. And you'll find that on his website, that uh, he is now called Mr. Millennium, or Master Millennium. And uh, with this little series here, they are ridiculing any perception or any idea that anyone in a secret society or fraternal order could possibly be involved in anything other than, well, you know, some boyish pranks, dancing around candles in robes at midnight, taking silly oaths that actually mean nothing. Hmm. Well, that might be an idea, too. Of course, or, uh, the American Broadcasting Corporation might be a little upset. Maybe they checked off Art Bell's cult, ABC. That can work, too. Thanks for the poor Art Bell's conspiracy. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> we'll see you later. Yep, you bet. First, first. And that's it, folks. That was the, uh, <laughs> that was the little play that they gave us on the Art Bell Show just a few nights ago. I died laughing. And uh, since uh, our reception here is not too good, being that this is news, I took it right off his website. And uh, it is news, because it is a deception. And uh, I would challenge, challenge... <laughs> Art Bell, you and your buddy caller, you lied. Now sue me. I've just been waiting for that, you know, because if it ever gets in court, we can have discovery and all that kind of stuff, and we can uh, we can really find the truth. Isn't it funny, ladies and gentlemen, that Art Bell, John Lear, Lieutenant Colonel James Bobo Gritz, and a whole bunch of others, all started out in Las Vegas. It's because they all belong to the same lodge. All of them. The same lodge, ladies and gentlemen. After all, it's the city with the Luxor Hotel and the MGM Grand. Which, by the way, from the air looks a lot different than it does from the ground. It's a huge green cross. What was the first flag that Columbus planted on the shore when he landed in the New World? It was a white flag with a green cross. It was not the flag of Spain. That was the next one. The first flag he planted represented whatever secret order it was that he really represented. And, uh, of course, if you visited the Luxor, <laughs> you really took a trip into symbology. And notice that the uh, the lion of the MGM Grand is looking directly at the Luxor. And so, <laughs> we have sort of made a little circle here, haven't we? This just complements the many tapes that we've done on these subjects, most of which are much more meaningful than what you've heard so far tonight. However, what you've heard tonight should be, well, should be illuminating, to say the least. And uh, should cause you to open your eyes, should cause you to listen a little better. Here's my admonition to everyone. I don't care who you are. Listen to everyone. Read everything. Believe absolutely nothing. Not even what I say, not what your mother says, not what your priest says, not what your minister says, not what your brother says, not what your boss says, and especially not what your teachers say, unless you can prove it in your own research that you must conduct with due diligence. The truth is elusive at best. And anyone who relies upon anyone else to tell them the truth is in reality a puppet. A puppet. Belonging. 
heart and soul to that person. And whenever they pull the strings, of course, you believing that they're telling you the truth, you will dance to that tune. And you will dance until you're exhausted and fall down dead, if that's what they want you to do. But you will be enslaved mentally within the confines of your own skull because of your own because of your own stupidity. This is the age of deception, ladies and gentlemen. This is the most deceptive age in all of the history of the world. If you think people were deceived in the past, if you have read history and you think people were living in ignorance, if you think that they were deceived by their kings, their queens, their sultans, their emirs, their lords, their masters, their religions, their governments, their families, whoever, Those people had it made compared to the modern man and woman. Because information is so pervasive and so easy to control. Not only easy to control, but easy to warp and change and manipulate. Especially with television. People would much rather watch something than read something. And they don't much like to hear anything at all. Under circumstances like that, ladies and gentlemen, people can be mesmerized, their minds can be controlled, neutralized, and maybe even eliminated simply by the little boob tube in their living room. If the person speaking to them, or if they perceive the broadcast to have been created by authority, they will believe it without question. And that goes for at least 95% of the population, of any given population. Most people will look around for someone who will tell them what they already have decided they wish to believe, and when they find someone who will tell them that, they will follow them without question because it makes them feel good. Isn't it amazing that many people choose Art Bell to be that person? Because he gives them a fantasy world that they would rather believe exists than the reality of the one in which they live. You're listening to WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. phones and uh, get your comments. We're going to open the phones and get your comments on all of this. The number is 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. We'll take your calls now. And uh, I have a little cold, folks. <clears throat> so if all of a sudden I turn down the my voice, it's because I have to cough or something. And uh, I'm uh, using some nose spray, which causes all my uh, passages to dry out. And we live at a high altitude in a cold climate here in the mountains in the winter. And uh, so <clears throat> that dryness causes me some great discomfort. And, and uh, 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 it's really hard to, uh, to talk right when you're all dried out inside. So I have a cup of coffee here and I have some orange juice and... Occasionally, I will be taking a sip, and uh, so if I pause, you'll know what it's for. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, yes, I, have, uh, been listening. I need you to talk a lot louder. I can barely hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, I have been uh, catching your program for the last few days, and the subject you're on. Uh, can you hear me okay now? 
Well, you're still really low. Can you put the mouthpiece directly in front of your mouth and really talk loud, please? Okay, how's this? That's better. You see, we don't have normal radio equipment here. It's how we keep prices low so that we can afford to do this. We just have a speaker phone about 14 inches away from a microphone. Uh huh. And it's quite enlightening uh, what I'm learning from different sources at the same time. And I haven't been listening to your program very long, but I uh, have come to understand that you are, uh, I don't know how to say, maybe pro militia, uh, as I am as well. Absolutely. It is the duty of all Americans. It, it was uh, pre-existing the government. In fact, the Constitution recognizes that the militia pre-existed the Constitution. And I agree, and I'm aware. And the uh, point I want to make was, in, in uh, regards to the subject you're talking about, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, any militia group that has any degree of Freemason in it has been compromised. And I wanted to see what your opinion was on that. Well, that's not necessarily true, because, uh, as you probably heard me say tonight, the, the, the people in the lower degrees really have no idea what it is to which they belong. They're there for, for gain, or because one of their friends belongs and brought them in, and they like the camaraderie, and they got to meet people they never would ever have met in their entire life, um, they are guaranteed to be helped up the ladder. They're guaranteed to be helped in any legal problem they have. They're guaranteed to get preference on contracts and jobs and promotions and everything else. So most of them are there for social and selfish reasons, for material gain and for, for being able to hobnob with the, with the top of the community. And uh, they're, they're what we call useful idiots. So, just because they're in your militia, if they belong to the lower degrees, does not mean that your militia has been compromised. Well, in regards to their oath, if they were sent to spy, so to speak, uh, because you have to realize that the people that the militias are directly in conflict with are the ones that are in the high positions that are they're causing all of the grief in this government. Absolutely. And that's when they would discover what it was to which they belonged, and at that point they would have to make a decision. Am I going to go and spy on these men who, who I, I love and I'm, I belong to their militia group because I believe in this country and I think that we're going to have to fight for our liberties and freedoms, or am I going to obey the dictates of the lodge and go and spy on these people? And, in regards to their oath, if they were sent, they would be compelled to go. Well, not necessarily, because the oaths are taken under a fraud that it is a benevolent order existing for the good of the community. Anything perpetrated under fraud is no longer holding or binding. Do you understand? I understand. So at that point, they could renounce it all and walk away. But now we have to ask ourselves, would they do that? Well, you have right to be. Well, I would, I would just tell our brothers out there to be watchful. Yeah, it's, it's the oaths that are the key, and it is the human condition that would probably make them obey the Lodge rather than do what they should do and go and tell the truth about what they've been involved in and what they were asked to do and renounce it. Yes, and remember, it's not just Freemasons. It's all of these fraternal orders. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what they profess to be doing. When you get into the actual writings and speeches and newsletters and publications and uh, training books and, and uh, courses that they, that they teach, you're going to find that this country was taken over by a subversive movement shortly after it was founded. That's correct. Well, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate your show, and thank you for talking. Thank you for calling. Goodbye.
The number is 520-333-4578. That's 520-333-4578. And uh, the subject tonight, you already know. You heard the Art Bell and the little 32nd degree Freemason deception there that I played for you, that Art Bell ran on his broadcast just a few nights ago. And, uh, <laughs> folks, you would be just absolutely amazed. The, uh, the newspaper or the newsletter or the journal of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry up until the point just a few years ago when it was discovered uh, to, to be what it was, was called the New Age. Where do you think the New Age movement comes from? It comes out of these secret societies and secret orders. Were you aware that the exact same New Age movement with the exact same teachings prevailed in Germany during Hitler's rise to power during the 30s? Were you aware that Hitler belonged to the Thule Lodge in Germany? That he got his beginning and his boost up the ladder? to the dictatorship of Germany because he was a member in a secret order? How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that Nazi means National Socialist German Workers' Party? It doesn't mean national right-wing conservative constitutionalist Christian party. It means national socialist German workers party. Hitler was a socialist. The battle to bring Hitler to power was not between the right and the left. It was between socialism and communism and Hitler didn't even know enough to know that the end the end goal of socialism is communism. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Uh, Just like the last caller, I need you to put your mouth right in front sorry, of the phone. Yes. Talk much louder. Okay, better. Um, I uh, listen to your program, and I'm just wondering uh, if there's some uh, good books around that you may be able to offer or that I can pick up someplace uh, to more or less, uh, you know, give me a, uh, a fuller education on this. First one you need to look for right off the bat is Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. <coughs> if, you, if you go to enough used bookstores, you will find it. Morals and Dogma Albert. by Albert Pike. Okay, thank you. Start with that. Thank you. That should be your primary education. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye. 520-333-4578. Anyone who has not read, has not, there goes that dry throat again. My tongue sticks, literally, I'm not kidding, my tongue is sticking to, the, to my mouth. It's the most incredible feeling. Anyone who has not read Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma must do so. Good evening, you're on the air. Fuck you, bitch. Oh, there's a Freemason showing his true colors. Did you hear what he said? No one else would have done such a thing, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're not talking about anything else, and we are not revealing anyone else. So there you have an example of the true colors of one of these subversive, mindless, robot puppet tricks. 520-333-4578. He didn't even have the guts to refute the facts. And none of them do with me. They can do it with someone who doesn't know or when they're playing a game with another one of their own, such as Art Bell. But they can't ever and will not ever do it with me. They haven't got the guts. Because I open up my vast library of their own works here and I quote their own greatest authors, greatest writers, and greatest speakers until they are left absolutely dumbfounded and driven into the dust. You poor, miserable, ignorant twit. Gutless, coward is what you were, by doing such a thing. And you talk about, you actually talk about 
the uh, <laughs> the rules of the lodge that you must lead such wonderful moral lives. One of the oaths, ladies and gentlemen, says that they will honor they will honor and protect the wives and daughters of their fellow brothers of the lodge. But all other women are fair game. 520-333-4578. And that should uh, convince those of you who have accused me of uh, screening the calls that it's not true. No calls have ever been screened on this broadcast. And by the way, we are not responsible for the profanity or the insults that anyone uh, may hurl out of the world when they call. We have no idea who's on the other end of the phone when we answer. 520-333-4578 is the number. And you all know the subject. So, let's hear your thoughts on this. And if there's a Freemason out there who's got some guts and also some brains and some intelligence and knows how to put forth an argument intelligently, please call. <laughs> what do you want to bet, folks, that that will never happen? And if it does, what do you want to bet that I score a knockout? Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, this is Bruce from North Carolina. Hi, Bruce. It's, uh, there are many Freemason members in the Mafia or organized crime. Oh, that's a very interesting and very, uh, 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 very good question. The Mafia was actually formed from youth gangs in Sicily by a man named Giuseppe Molini, Mazzini. Not Molini, but Mazzini. His name was Giuseppe Mazzini. And uh, he formed the Mafia from street youth gangs long, long, long time ago. Now, if you watch the, uh, the uh, series of movies called The Godfather, you will see that during one of these episodes, or one of these, uh, I think there was three of them, uh, that the, uh, the Godfather is being actually initiated into a secret order. Were you aware of that? Did you see all three episodes? Well, I, when I was, I was uh, 16, 17 when I saw that, and okay. I didn't remember it. Okay. I, I suggest that everybody watch it from the beginning all the way to the end, and you will see that he is initiated into a secret order, and that the secret order has something to do with the Vatican, you will also, by studying the history of the secret orders and the Italian secret orders in particular, find reference to the, uh, the uh, um, P1 and P2 lodges of Italy. There's also a P3. Have you ever heard of those lodges? No, I haven't. These are Masonic lodges in Italy. Now, just recently, the Italian government, in an effort to free themselves from the Mafia and from corruption, did extensive investigations of these lodges. Did you remember the murder of Roberto Calvi? No, I sure didn't. You didn't. Well, he was murdered by hanging from Blackfriars Bridge in London. He was a highly degreed member of the P2 Lodge in Italy, and uh, he was involved with the with the, uh, the theft from the uh, Catholic Church of maybe hundreds of millions or maybe even billions of dollars. You'll see this referred to or insinuated in The Godfather. Well, now, The Godfather was written by Mario Puzza yeah. from his actual discussions of the truth with real mafia high-ranking figures. In other words, The Godfather is based upon truth. It's a true story. It had to be written, and it had to be made into a movie as fiction, but it's true. You'll also find that the intelligence community of the United States of America was founded by one Wild Bill Donovan in the OSS. It's also a matter of record with major researchers like 
me, who have delved into the intelligence community and the secret societies, that all of the members of the OSS were Knights Templars. And it was the higher ups of the OSS, the real veterans of the American intelligence effort during World War II, who founded the Central Intelligence Agency upon executive order of President Truman, who was a 33rd degree Freemason. During World War II, you'll find that the OSS conspired with the American Mafia to create links between the American Mafia and the Italian Mafia in order to spy on the Germans and, uh, and Mussolini's uh, political and military machine during World War II. You'll also find that post-World War II, the OSS and the Central Intelligence Agency were the responsible for the creation of the P2 Lodge in Italy, which has been responsible for the major corruption and crime in that country and most of Europe for many, many years. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, there's definitely a connection, ladies and gentlemen, between the organized underworld and the secret societies. The organized underworld is the underworld extension of the above world fraternal lodges. How about that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. 520-333-4578 is the number. You will find that when you get into the honest research of all these things, and when you have researched enough that you can penetrate through all the BS and all the exoteric metaphors and arrive at the esoteric true teachings and the true history that the average man, unless he wakes up and becomes aware of all this, and learns what it is that he is fighting instead of what it is that they want him to believe that he's fighting, is helpless. Helpless. He couldn't win against this secret force if he wanted to. Doesn't care how dedicated, doesn't matter how dedicated he is, doesn't matter how much he believes in liberty and freedom or anything else, if he doesn't understand the enemy that he's fighting, he cannot win. He won't win. Just as simple as that. These people are not interested in freedom. They're not interested in liberty. They're interested in control. And the first thing that a Freemason learns when he joins the Lodge is absolute obedience to the Master of the Lodge and to the Grand Lodge of his state. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. How are you? I'm fine. puts out a journal in, uh, in Washington, D.C., doesn't it? Yes, it's now called the Scottish Rite Journal. It used to be called the New Age. I have almost every copy that's ever been printed. Well, how about bringing us up to date on who's in charge of the journal now? Do you know who they are? Who's in charge of the actual printing of the journal? Yeah. Why don't you tell us? And who sits on the board? Why don't you tell us? Okay, let's go start with these gentlemen. Right In the first place here, we've got... Uh, I believe it was in uh, either November or December, Mel Tillis, who's a 33rd degree Mason, he's the musician over at uh, Branson, Missouri. Yes. And we've got the Secretary of Agriculture, Daniel Glickman. Yes. They were both conferred to the 33rd degree, I believe it was the 14th of December of this uh, past year, 68, mm -hmm. 98. 98, yes. Yeah, now here's the editor-in-chief of the journal. His name is C. Fred Kleinneck. He's a 33rd degree Mason. Remember him back there in the politics not too long ago? Yes, I do. And the managing editor now at the present time is Dr. John C. Bodiger. That's B-O-E-T-T-J-E-R. He's a 33rd degree GC. I guess that's Grand Commander. Uh-huh. That Grand Commander also uh, denotes Knights Templar. Yeah, okay. Now we've got the business manager. It's uh, Rear Admiral. Eugene Sizemore, 33rd degree. How about that? He's maybe <laughs> retired. Now, here's the interesting ones here. We've got editorial board. Ex-Senator Alan K. Simpson, 33rd degree, honorary chairman. Ernest Borgnine, 
33rd degree, honorary chairman. You, you remember they made a movie, it was called The Wild Bunch, with mm. William Holden yes. and Ernest Borgnine. Yes. Remember who uh, William Holden was? He was Pike. Uh-huh. And uh, that was a political movie. They ought to go back and, and uh, get that Western and read it. Now, let's go on down this list. We've got honorary co- uh, co-chairman. is Warren D. L-I-C-H-T-Y, Esquire. He's a 33rd degree. We've got Dr. S. Brett Morris, Executive Secretary. Then we've got Donald G. Broachman. That's B-R-O-T-Z-M-A-N, Esquire. Then we've got Daryl J. Brown. These are all 33rd degree. Sure. Park A. Dodd, Jr., Harry E. Ickles, Jr., that's E-C-H-O-L-S. Then we've got O. James Horton, Jr., and we've got Pierre Normad, who happens to be a, 33rd, a 32nd degree, K-C-C-H. That's Knights of the uh, Knights Templar. Yeah, these are the guys that's running it now. Now, let's get over in here. Here's an interesting article. You know also, also, I want to make a point. You said C. Fred Kleinitz. Yes. C. Fred Kleinitz used to be the head of NASA, I National right. Aeronautic and Space Administration. Mm-hmm. I've been saying that for years, and, and people, they all know that. Well, I'm going to send you a copy. But they didn't know that he was a 33rd degree Freemason, and I've been challenged on that. Now, you have confirmed it. Well, I'm going to send you a photostat copy of it. And then everybody will know it. But I also want to give you something very interesting here that will... Oh, when I said we have all of these, I wasn't joking. I just don't have them right in front of me here here tonight. But now we've got one over here that that really should interest everybody. It's on Orange, California, if I can find it here. Uh, Just a second here until I turn the page. We've got uh, Rabbi Sidney S. G-U-T-H-M-A-N. He's a 33rd degree Mason. And uh, this is at 5036 Allerton Street, Long Beach, California. That's his address. Now, don't give out people's private addresses or phone numbers. We don't want anyone uh, to be hurt because of us. Yeah, okay. Well, now listen to this here. It says, Sidney S. Guzman is a member of the Civil Service Commission of Long Beach, California, and a former Grand Chaplain of the Grand Lodge of California. Recently, the Long Beach Veterans Administration Medical Center awarded him a special merit citation for his work as chaplain, and he is rabbi of Congregation Shalom, Leisure World, California, a longtime member of the Long Beach Scottish Rite Bodies and chaplain of the El Malachi Shrine Temple. Uh Incidentally, John Wayne belonged to that also. Yes, he did. Uh, Rabbi Guthman was recently appointed chaplain of the Long Beach Police Department, the first time a rabbi has been so honored. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. And that goes on, there's quite a few more, but I'm going to photograph this and send it to you, and maybe some of the guys that don't believe that this stuff is going on, they can uh, write for a copy, and you can uh, send them one for five bucks or something. Yeah. C. Fred Kleindix was, uh, was the head of NASA during the Apollo space program. Isn't that when... Uh, Doesn't that ring a bell? <laughs> I think a couple of those guys got burned up down there, didn't they? Well, all, all kinds of things. Apollo. But but if you'll if you'll look at the names, the Apollo space program, who was Apollo? Yeah. Apollo I, was the sun god. Well, Buzz Aldrin. Look at, Buzz look at, Aldrin, is, uh, he's a 33rd degree mason. Well, what I'm, 32nd, I'm not sure what I'm trying to tell you is to pay attention to the name of the space program the names of all the different missions, the landing sites, the places on the moons where they landed according to the latitude and longitude of the moon, not the earth. Okay? All of the, all of the things that, uh, that pertain to the mystery school also pertain to the Apollo space program. Well, sure, and that's what makes me... I never believed that they went to the moon. I still believe this is well, they didn't. how it was ever perpetrated <laughs> yeah. the people. Yeah, they did not go to the moon in the Apollo space program. I think they went to the moon, but it was out in Hollywood. Well... <laughs> moon makers. <laughs> you got that right. Bill, there's a lot more information, and I'm going to get it out and send it to you. Good. And I think you'll find it interesting, but I think, I'm sure, I, at one time before you uh, went off the air and I, and I lost track of you, uh, I think I sent you a copy of where the Masonic Orders out of France was the leading overthrowers of Russia in 1917. Yeah, the, 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 grand, the, 
The Grand Orient Lodge. The was Grand this. Orient Lodge. Yes. It was 42 lodges that led the revolution in Russia in 1917 That's and overthrow the, uh, the Tsar and his family. That's correct. They also did the same thing in France. The, well, the Grand Orient Lodge was responsible for the French Revolution. Absolutely. They were also responsible uh, for the uh, uh, Peasants' Revolt in England, which tried to overthrow the English crown. And uh, here in this country, it was not the Grand French Orient, but the what they called the Jacobins, but the uh, they were aligned with the Grand French uh, Orient. And uh, France, um, in, in honor of the Masonic... A revolution in this country uh, gave us the gift of the uh, of the Statue of Liberty. Right, and also you remember it was Lafayette, a uh, 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 Mason that brought all the guns over here. That's right. Platinum. So I mean, this is this has been a Mason revolution for the last 225 or 30 years, and uh, all you've got to do is get a hold of some of their books and read it. That's right. You'll, you'll know this stuff is going on. That's true. That this new world order is nothing but a bunch of Masons trying to formulate this thing right here and make us all peasants in the world. Well, not just Masons. It, it is the well, highest... Well, yes, there's other organizations working with them. Well, it's, the high, it's not so much organizations. It's the highest degrees of all of the secret organizations which together call themselves the Brotherhood of Man or the Illuminati. Bill, I've got books on these guys that you wouldn't believe. Well, you would because mm -hmm. you've read this stuff. You know it. But there's stuff in here. Did you know a Mason can't even be kicked out of the lodge for treason? Did that's, you know that? That's right. In fact, they must, they must give him aid and comfort and shelter. Well, he's considered he's a world citizen, see? So anytime he commits treason, country where he's living, he's really not committing treason against the Masonic Order, he's committing treason against a subject country. Yes, that's this correct. That's the thing that goes on, and, most, and you, like you say, now I'm not referring to Blue Lodge Masons, I'm referring to the highest ranking Masons in the world, who yes. suckers out of the Blue Lodge Masons, and this has been going on so long until it's pathetic. Most Blue Lodge Masons are really ignorant of what's taking place. You're right, and they also have secret agreements with the governments wherein their lodges exist. For instance, here in the United States, the government has agreed, and there is an agreement between the lodge and the government, that no Freemason can be arrested or persecuted or shot or anything else if he is actually within the doors of the lodge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, police officers have no, they, no authority within uh, the lodge. They, uh, we, have, we just have two Masons here in central Missouri that raped the uh, They was having one of their big shindigs. And they raped these, took these women upstairs and raped them upstairs, like, you know, Bill Clinton's pulling that stuff. He's a demolay, I believe. Yes. Uh, probably, he's probably a full-fledged Mason now. But anyhow, these two Masons raped these two women, and it come out, it was the headlines of the Springfield, Missouri Leader newspaper. It was about a year ago. Nothing never happened to these guys. They just swept it under the rug. Sure. But if that would have been somebody else, they'd went to jail for it. Well, especially in the in the state of Missouri. Missouri is one of the uh, most uh, prominent Masonic uh, uh, states in the Union. Yeah, Bill, there's 121,000 Masons in the state of Missouri. That that they were are willing to make public. Well, that's that's what their books that's what their books read. But now that's not well, you don't have access to their books. Those that's, those are the secrets of the lodge of, of their lodges. Yeah, those are the secrets of the lodge. There's, there's 54,000 Masons in the small state of Arkansas, too. Yes. And out there in Arizona, where you live, you've got 14,006 or 700. Well, well... There's not as many Masons in Arizona. Well, they, now, they let, let, out there. let me say this again. You don't know that. Well, Those numbers are secrets of the Lodge. They only make public what they want to make public, and they will never reveal the membership of a Freemason who does not want to be revealed. Yeah, well, I'm saying this is in their book. It's the official registry of the Masonic Lodge. This is the number they give. Well, I've, I've seen those numbers, too, and I'm not sure that they're true. Well, there's probably more than what the book says. It's like you say, if now, you want to be... Uh, uh, out it, as they say in the lesbian world, well, then uh, they just keep it quiet. That's true. But Bill, it's been nice talking to you, and I'm going to send you some stuff and let you read up on this, and maybe you, among some of these guys that don't believe this stuff, have them to write in and send them a, a little brochure of it. It's public knowledge if they want to look for it. 
Well, the, the, some of it's public knowledge. It's yeah. not all public knowledge. You have, and you have to look well, real if, hard to get into the secrets of the lot. If you search these bookstores and find some of their old Masonic books, it goes back around the turn of the century. They didn't hide it too much because most people back in those days didn't get a chance to get out and, and read this. Yeah, the older the books, the... Now the, they're dead and gone. These books are out there. Yeah, the older the books, the more truth you will find in them. You got that right. Thanks, Bill, for Thanks. picking uh, up your time. Well, thank you for your call. 520-333-4578 is the number. That was, uh, this is a very good call. Um, but don't think that it's so easy to find these things out, ladies and gentlemen. It took me about 25 years. But you can find it if you want to look, and if you want to study, and if you want to read, and if you want to delve and ask questions. But first, before you can even begin to do it, you will never understand a thing you're reading if you don't get rid. I mean, you've got to be able to separate your beliefs and your prejudices and your preconceived uh, ideas from everything else. You cannot apply what you think you know or what maybe you really do know to what you're reading and make it come out right. Because what they believe and what you're reading is completely different from anything that you've ever learned or believed or known in your entire life. And it will completely baffle you until you learn to start fresh like you never learned anything in your life, and then begin to learn what it is that they really believe, what they're really saying, and you've got to learn their secret symbolic language. It's important. You see, folks, Freemasonry is an occult secret society. And all Freemasons have aligned themselves with the occult. And uh, it's the obvious conclusion that anybody with even a casual knowledge of the Lodge are ultimately forced to realize. Occult simply means deliberately kept hidden. They don't want the public to know. Not revealed. Kept behind the veil. You'll see a lot of reference to that veil. So, uh, you have to understand that all Freemasons, all of them, even if it's your father, or your brother, or your sister, and yes, women can be members in the Order of the Eastern Star, or in a co-masonry lodge, where they practice co-masonry, as they call it, where the sexes attend the same lodge. You have to understand, they cannot and will not ever tell you the truth. And no matter how skillful a liar they may be, no matter how, no matter how convincing they are, when they tell you that, oh, I wouldn't lie to you, you're my son, or you're my daughter, or you're my wife, I would never tell you a lie. This is what the Lodge is all about. And then they spin their little web of deception. Listen to me very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. All Freemasons, whether male or female, no matter whether it's called the Freemasonic Lodge or the Ancient Order of Rosai Cruci or the AMORC or the Knights Templar or the Knights of Malta or the, the uh, Order of the Golden Dawn or the Templi Oriented Alice or any of these things, doesn't matter. They are all forbidden upon pain of death by solemn oath, never to reveal what goes on behind the closed doors of the Lodge, never to reveal any of the actual secrets of the Lodge, and when put into a position where they either must tell the truth or tell a lie, they must tell a lie, and they will not hesitate to do it. They are chronic, profound, and extremely good liars. So don't believe, don't ever believe that when you sit down with one of them and they tell you that, that it just isn't true what you hear. This is what we're really about. This is what we really do. They're lying to you. They know they're lying to you. And that that's all they can do is lie to you because upon pain of death, they cannot ever tell you the truth. And when they tell you 
that their oaths mean nothing because they're just a bunch of rituals and they don't mean anything. It's just ancient ceremonies that we go through and we just do it, you know, for tradition and history. They're lying to you again. Honorable men and women never ever take an oath unless they fully mean that oath within the depths of their soul and the bottom of their heart. And that they fully intend to keep it and carry it out. And if they tell you that the oath means nothing, they're also telling you that they are without honor. And that any oath that they would take in a court of law means nothing. Any oath that they would give you would mean nothing. That their marriage vows mean nothing. Do you understand? Good evening, you're on the air. Sure. Are you familiar with Scarlet and the Beast series? Yes, I am. But let me uh, let me preface it with this caution, and then you can give out whatever information that you want. Okay. The author has an agenda. He leaves out two prominent world powers that are also involved in this, and uh, have been infiltrated, and in many cases created by this. In other words, he presents the battle in the world taking place between British Freemasonry and French Freemasonry. Yeah. And that just isn't true. Because, in the first place, British Freemasonry is not as powerful as it once was. The true leadership in Freemasonry is the Scottish Rite, which has its headquarters in Washington, D.C., and is not British at all. Okay, and, and wait a minute, there are two others that he forgets conveniently to mention. That's international Zionism and the Vatican. Okay. Now, now with with now that the audience knows that, you can give your information. Well, apart from that, would you agree that this would be a good uh, initial source for people to start at least getting the foundation of the uh, background, the history, the? Uh... It's an excellent treatise on the history of the subversiveness of Freemasonry. But they have to understand that when they're reading it, that the person who wrote it is intentionally sheltering and protecting Zionism and the Vatican. Okay. Uh, and I thank you for bringing this to my attention because I was not aware of that. Well, you're welcome. It's a series of three books called Scarlet and the Beast. It comes in volume one, two, and three. It's available from J.K.I. Publishing, P.O. Box, one, three, one, four, eight, Uh, yeah, go ahead. 800-333-5344. I'm reading it right now, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite, quite revealing. It gets into the drugs, uh, drug dealing, uh, Illuminati. They also have some tapes on the Illuminati, which I have not heard, but they're available through these people, mm -hmm. uh, which I might check into. So, if uh, that helps anybody... Uh, Great. Okay, boss. Thank you. 520-333-4578 is the number. Number, 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 number. Okay, while we're uh, waiting here, we'll just uh, move on to, uh, let me see, where are we going to move on to here? Let's, uh, oh, let's do this one. And the facts are these. I didn't, I didn't choose this position. I didn't want it. But God chose us for his own reasons. But I need your help. And I'm praying that you will understand how important this is. You see, our situation financially is right now so critical that some of the lawyers that participated in this have not even yet been paid.
Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that Norman Vincent Peale was a 33rd degree Freemason? Did you know that... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I should pop so many bubbles here. Billy Graham is a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. Ronald Reagan was a 33rd degree Freemason. I could go on and on and on and on. I could name so many people. You just wouldn't believe it. But it's true. 520-333-4578. Is the number. And uh, if you'd like to uh, give your input, we're interested in hearing it. Now, isn't it incredible, ladies and gentlemen, that in a nation founded upon liberty and freedom, we have people who believe that they have to meet in secret, and then after meeting in secret, have to try to convince us that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with meeting in secret? How can that be? You see, no one meets in secret unless they know that their neighbors, their community, their friends and relatives would object to what is going on if they, in fact, met in public. It's incredible what you learn when you take the blinders off and begin to look at the world as it really is. Let's, uh, let's go to uh, a book called The Dark Side of Freemasonry, edited by Ed Decker. He says that Anton LaVey the high priest of the Church of Satan states that, and I can verify that he did because I did some research into the Church of Satan, Anton LaVey, and its connection with military intelligence. He says that Anton LaVey says, quote, Masonic orders have contained the most influential men in many governments, and virtually every occult order has many Masonic roots, end quote. That's true. Most occult orders sprang from Freemasonry. Good evening, you're on the air. Yes, Mr. Cooper. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yeah, my name is Bo from St. Louis, and uh, I really don't know how to go about all this research and everything. However, uh, my, my father is a Mason. Uh-huh. And uh, you're, you're not alone, by the way. Many people's fathers are Freemasons. And pardon? I said you're not alone in that respect. Yeah, I read your book, and uh, uh, Behold a Pale Heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carol Quigley was uh, William Jefferson Clinton's mentor oh, yeah. in college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's an insider, yeah. And uh, anyhow... In uh, fact, Tragedy and Hope uh, confirms everything that I've ever uh, said on this broadcast. Really? So it's, 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 that book is very accurate? Oh, yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, could, I, could, I could send you tons and tons of, uh, you know, no, um, Masonic literature and stuff like that. I don't know if it would do you any good. Um, my, my father is a uh, 32nd degree. He's got Scottish Rite plaques on his wall. And uh, I've gone up you know, with magnifying glasses uh, to these plaques on his wall. Uh, and uh, it's got even a quote from the Koran. Uh, they, they're, they're like they're an umbrella uh, uh, encompassing all religions. Is this what they're trying to do? Or No. In fact, they don't comp encompass any religions. What they are is a religion unto themselves wherein man is God. They worship the intellect. I asked him a direct question one time. I said, do you, do you, does your life, will your life confess that Jesus Christ is Lord? He says, no, we won't do that. Not ever. We in, can't do that. In fact, he can't, even, he can't even mention the name of Jesus in the lodge. That's right. Their god is Lucifer, and it's not even a god, it's a philosophy. I, where I've it's, also heard, it's sir, a I would like to ask you, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a company that I found that uh, I can get the uh, copy of uh, 
Albert. Yes, Albert Pikes, a dog, dog, dog. Morals and dog, 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 sir. And I was just wondering, they want 55 bucks for it. Do you think that's been watered down? Or? Well, if I were you, I would go to used bookstores. You will find an old copy in used bookstores, and that's the one I would trust. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's strange because this, this place is called Kissinger Publishing Company. Well, well, Kissinger reprints a lot of these books, but we don't know if he's reprinting the entire books or if he's omitting things. All I can tell you is that if you find the original old volumes, and the older the better, they, they tell all of the truth in all of those old volumes. And as they began to discover that many of us were, were beginning to, uh, to research and, and reveal the truths of what they really are, what they really believe, and what they're really about, that they have been sanitizing their publications. Uh-huh. So you can buy the same book now um, that was written 100 years ago, and you'll find the one that was written 100 years ago will tell the truth, and the one that's written now leaves uh, it all out. the truth. They don't want the public, what they call the profane, to read their publications. Because there are some people who aren't stupid that can figure it out and, uh, and, and uh, discover the truth about who they are, what they are, what they believe in, and what their goals are. Have you ever heard of a man, uh, a preacher by the name of Dennis Fisher down in Florida? No. The it means- ministry's called Psalm 23. He's really, really getting deep to uh, trying to expose the does it ring a bell? Uh, uh, I would like to get your your uh, information on uh, how to uh, uh, send you uh, 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 the donations uh, for this cause, and I would also like to, you know, get involved in this because uh, this is uh, wreaked havoc on me, my wife. Uh, uh, it's caused terrible arguments. I've lost my father and my mother, and I've known them since they've joined and. I think he's been a mason for... Well, here's, here's what they believe. Even if you are a relative, even if you are their son, even if, if he was a son and you were his father, here's what they believe. If you are not one of us, you are nothing. That's right. Well, I, saw, I read in your book it said Goyim cattle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, uh, I need your, uh, your address or something so that I can... Okay. Write it down right now because I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to give it to you fast because we're out of time and we've got to go real quick. Well, I don't have time. Uh, you're going to have to listen tomorrow night or some other broadcast because we're out of time. We're really out of time. So just okay, just tune in again and, and we'll give it out. We always do. Okay. Good night, folks. That's it. We're out of time. And God bless each and every single one of you. And please, for God's sake, wake up.